Question number 19. Now this is a doozy. So we have a ball that is launched at 53 degrees to the horizontal. We do not know the initial velocity. We need to find it. That's question A that we need to answer. What do we know? So once that ball is kicked, it goes up in the air. They give us the distance to a wall. They also give us that the wall is 7 meters high and the distance to the wall is 24 meters and it takes 2.2 seconds for the ball to get there. So hopefully what you see is that we have enough to figure out at least the Vx. How are we going to find Vx? So we know horizontally that Vx is going to be V0 times cosine of 53. The y initial is going to be that same V0 times sine of 53. Well, not getting me much yet. Again, I will continue with the data that is given to me regarding the horizontal part of motion, 24 meters for displacement, 2.2 seconds for time. Having that, I can get my Vx component, since there is no acceleration, we assume there is no air resistance, I can get 10.9 meters per second for velocity that is horizontal. Now that I know that V0 is 18.1, then my Vy initial is going to be 18.1 sine of 53, 14.4. So then, since I'm figuring out the vertical position of the ball, I'm going to use 14.5 times 2.2, because that's how long it took to get to the wall, minus 9.81 over 2 times 2.2 squared. That gets me 8.06. So then, if I subtract 7 meters from that, I get 1.06 meters above the wall. Now, where it lands is 1 meter less than the wall, because they say there is a railing around the playground. So the playground is one meter lower at six meters. To figure out, so we've got A and B, to figure out the horizontal distance, I'm going to now figure out the time that it took to get there. So my change in Y for that is going to be six. And from there, I'm going to say six equals 14.5 times T minus Again, 9.81 over 2 times t squared. And then I'm going to just graph that 0.498, almost 0.5. And change in t is nearly 2.5, which is 2.46. Now remember, before when we graphed for time, we got one negative answer and one positive answer. That was easy, because time could not be negative. We just picked the positive answer. Here I have both of them positive. If you look at the trajectory, there are two points in time where our projectile is at 6 meters above the ground. So here is your 0.498 and here is your 2.46 seconds. In order to answer the question for change in x, I'm going to take 2.46 and mind you, you don't use this, you still use the horizontal component which was 10.91 meters per second. So times 10.9, when I multiply that, I get 26.8, 26.8 meters. So then if I subtract subtract 24 from it, 2.8, um, it's going to clear the wall by 106 meters and it's going to land 2.8 meters from the wall on the playground. These are the answers to question number 19, which was rather a doozy. I'm glad it's done. Hope it helps. Thank you.